Got a bit of a situation here. Jamie and I recently ordered the brand new Ninja Foodi Power Blender Ultimate System. The inside of this reservoir, can you see that Jamie? Is all beat up and it's beat up from the blade. And then down inside of here, right down here, Jamie, I don't know if you can get that. There's a huge chunk of plastic missing from, again, from the blade that we found inside of this. So here's the question. We're going to reach out to Ninja and we're going to see what Ninja is going to do. Are they going to be like, yes, we're going to send you a whole new system. We'll send you a new reservoir. I'm not sure, but stay tuned because we are going to keep you updated in another video. So as you just saw, we had a problem with the pitcher that Ninja shipped us. Well, we've now since resolved the issue. I reached out to Ninja, phenomenal customer service, I must admit. Spoke to a super nice guy in Colombia. He was excellent and sent me a brand new pitcher. So that replaces the one that was really, really beat up and scratched that we would have showed you. So we've done all kinds of videos over the years on blenders and food processors, and there's always a dough blade, and we've never experimented and tried one. With, uh, tried one. So we're gonna change that now. So in the book, the Ninja book here, which is quite nice. There is, it's called Dough Kickstarter Pizza Dough. So we got a Fleischmann's Pizza Yeast. So I'm gonna add my warm water in. Our yeast. So sugar we have one teaspoon. Five minutes. So half a cup of olive oil. Then we've got our salt. And then we've got three cups of flour. All things considering, that wasn't too bad. All right, so 45 seconds was the time on that. Form it into a bowl, uh, a, a bowl, a ball, and knead it for two minutes. All right, so I kneaded that dough for two minutes, uh, rolled it, formed it into a ball, and put it into a bowl with a little bit of olive oil uh, uh, in the bottom, and then covered it with saran wrap, and then we set a timer for 45 minutes. So we're gonna push that aside, do a couple dishes, and then start running this through some other tests. So a couple things, just got cleaned up here, got prepped for a next series of tests. Drives me crazy. I don't know why Ninja hasn't fixed this. I don't even know if you're gonna be able to pick it up, Jamie, with the camera on uh, the handle here, but this pitcher was not even submersed in water. It was just washed, and the inside of this handle is full of water droplets. So I don't know what that's gonna look like down the road. Uh, if it's gonna create some sort of smell or whatever. I wish it was either a sealed unit or you could take it apart and dry it. Anyway, so very intuitive unit. Uh, two, two lids. Um, this lid here is for chopping, the chopping blade only. And this lid here is for discs. And we're gonna show you how they both work. But depending on which lid you have on the unit limits what options you have on your dial. So you'll see here, maybe you can't see, the only option here is disc. But if I switch this lid out and put the, they call it the flat top lid on. So now you've got smoothie, bowl, what does that say, spread. I'm looking across my body. I can't, dough, chop. So pretty smart that it knows that. Here's the, the accessories it comes with. Now I, I must say, this little box, we paid extra for it. I'll look it up and I'll let you know by the end of the video how much it costs, storage system. I think it's a must. I mean, you don't want these blades kicking around that someone's gonna get cut. But anyway, so we're gonna grab the shaft portion here that's gonna go on our spindle. And then we have two different blade options, one of which is reversible. So we've got this blade here, which is trying to get the light. So it's a grater, it's a single side. And then we have a slicer and then we have shred. So let's start out with slicing. So we're gonna drop that on there. We're gonna put that lid on. Now you'll notice this plunger comes out, but so does this. So it's like a two part pusher. So we're gonna hit start. And we're gonna start with something simple like cucumber. And we're gonna to switch to our plunger and finish that off. So, I must admit, I think this did a really, really good job. Let me grab a, a plate or a bowl to show you. So, very, very consistent, as you can see here, all across the board. And one cucumber in a couple seconds, I was pretty impressed with that. So now I was gonna show you to um, do some shredded carrots. Turn it on, 
or grab a carrot. So a little tiny piece left over on the top, not a big deal. This would be perfect if you were doing a slaw or something like that. Jamie, maybe you can get a look at that. Very consistent, very, very well shredded. So now I'd like to show carrots, but with the, the greater blade. Thank you, Jamie. And I think that the application for this would be baking, for example, if you were gonna bake a carrot cake and you want those carrots like pulverized. So let's have a look at that. So again, I don't think it's a setting I would use or a blade I would use very much, but, and it was a small carrot, completely pulverized. So again, would that be a good application for carrot cake? Maybe. We have celery here. Let's try slicing it and then we're going to I always mix that, shred it. Thank you, Jamie. All right, so we, here we have it. Piece of celery. Now, in my opinion, I mean, if you're only doing one or two pieces of carrot or celery or cucumber, you're probably not gonna pull this out and have to do all these dishes, you just slice it by hand. But if you're doing a lot of cooking, this could save you a lot of time. So let's have a look at those. So, I mean, a couple of inconsistent pieces only because I think when I went to push it with the plunger, the celery went down on its side. But overall, very, very consistent in the uh, pieces. All right, so let's flip that blade over and try shredding. Get a piece of celery. So much like the carrot with the, I call it pulverizing blade, I don't really see an application when you would do this with celery. Now you may do this with cabbage. My only issue with that, if you're making a slaw, is you'd have to cut your chunks of cabbage very, very small in order to feed it down inside of that tube. So let's get this cleaned up and then we are going to use the chopping blade with the different lid and chop some onion. We're now gonna take out the very treacherous man-eater, person-eater. So we're gonna throw on, this only works with this lid, correct? Yes. So that only works with that lid. So <clears throat> we learned that, that the other lid with the chute will not work with the chopping blade. So now we've got a large red onion, Spanish onion, and then we're gonna put that on, and we're gonna to go to chop, as you can see here. Okay, so also has a pulse. All right. So, as far as onion goes, looks chopped very, very, very nicely. Seems to be very consistent. Maybe stuff a little bit closer to the blade because I hit that pulse button. It was a little bit more pulverized, but there you go. Within a couple seconds chopping a whole onion, that made pretty quick work of that. All right, just bringing in one of my sidekicks here, who's my fruit monster. We're gonna make a smoothie. So this is an orange blueberry smoothie from the book. It was an orange raspberry, but I prefer blueberries, so we switched that out, those out. So painstakingly peeled two oranges, which I despise doing, quarter cup, of uh, vanilla yogurt, half a cup of milk, and a cup of frozen blueberries. So it says to add the ingredients as they're listed, so that's what we're gonna do. So we got two cups, or sorry, two whole oranges, quartered, poorly peeled. Yep. What's so funny? Then we got a quarter cup of yogurt, you're gonna be okay to try this smoothie there? Yeah. Then we've got half a cup of milk. And then one cup of frozen blueberries. So then we throw our lid on. 
Will it fit, he says. Boom, lid was cross-threaded. Thank you. So we're gonna go power, smoothie, correct, Jamie? Mm -hmm. Now I should add that this portion is the exact same as the Ninja Smoothie Maker. I have it here actually. So this is sort of like a combination kit, if you will. All right, so a glass for Caden and Jamie. Go ahead, buddy. Different taste, but it's pretty good. What do you taste? Basically orange. I would say maybe one orange, maybe one and a half. So two oranges is too much? Yeah, you can really orange. taste orange. Not as much blueberry? You can't taste any blueberry. All right, so that's a smoothie. How's the consistency? Any chunks? No. No chunks? Little bits of blueberry, but... I Little think bits of blueberry in Jamie's? To be expected. Caden, bits of blueberry or...? Yeah, a little. Okay, so... That's our smoothie. So the next thing we bought, if you could just step aside there, young helper. This was also another add-on. And this is a spice or coffee grinder. So I'm gonna get my area cleaned up here. We're gonna throw in some coffee beans and grind those up. Okay, so max fill line on this, 12 tablespoons. Just got some McDonald's roasted coffee beans here. be more than sufficient. So we're just gonna throw this in. So the instructions say to um, put your blender food processor on the highest setting, which Jamie went to manual mode because he can see it better than I can here. And it says for a drip, what did it say, for drip coffee? Yeah. Uh, 20 seconds. So defaults to 10. <laughs> So I think that this attachment may be something that would be really interesting for a lot of people. I mean, to me, it looks really nice. Looks like ground coffee. But even for somebody like myself, who I love to cook like Southeast Asian food and Indian food, if you're buying like whole uh, seeds and uh, pods, uh, spices, grind them up, toast them out on the, uh, on the stove, Really, really kind of nice little attachment. I'm gonna look that up and see how much I paid for that. So let's talk about this unit. First things first, this pizza dough looks unbelievable. It's in roughly an hour. Jamie, can I, are, we have the camera on? I mean, it's, it's three times the size of the original. It looks unbelievable. Unreal. If you're a fan of the show, and we hope you are, you know that The Average Kitchen always does a scoring matrix for every product that we review. And we break down categories. Today, we actually added a category for the first time ever. So let's go through this. This product, when I bought it just before Christmas, we're in February now, was $239 US. But it was an additional $20 for the storage case, and it was an additional $25 for the spice coffee grinder, which I actually think those are reasonably priced, and I actually don't really have a huge issue with the price of the unit itself. So out of 10, average kitchen score, price point 8.1 out of 10. Functionality, I mean, off the charts. I mean, it did extremely well, 8.8. .8. Versatility, probably the single highest score we've ever given any product ever before at a 9.5. Here's where it starts to slide for us. The cleaning sucks. Almost nothing can go in the dishwasher. As you could see, can you see all of the moisture stuck inside of this handle? It'll never come out. The blades are very, very difficult to clean and not cut yourself. Obviously, if you've got anything that's sticking to this, um, that could be dangerous, so that's a bit of a problem. So that's one big issue we have with this product was the cleaning itself. And on that, sorry, my phone locked, 7.2. The size, the size is a good size. We gave it an eight. Here's the new category, storage. Now, as you could see, and am I missing anything or this is it? All of this stuff, the pitcher, this, this lid, this lid. Now, we did buy this additionally. Then we've got, we didn't even talk about this. This is the Ninja Twisty Smoothie Maker. 
Then you've got the smoothie maker that we obviously showed, full of condensation here. We're gonna let that dry out. Then of course you have the base. Then you have all the blades. Now, if I didn't buy this storage container, all of these blades would be just loose. So the problem for me is, where do you put all of this stuff? Like you tuck it away everywhere you can. So it's a bonus that you buy one product and you get all of these different things. So it's like, how did you describe it, Jamie? It's good and bad. It's good that you get all of this. It's bad that you now have to tuck it all away somewhere and figure out where you're gonna put it. That's just me or my and Jamie's opinion. You may look at it completely different. So on the storage, first time I've ever scored that, 6.8. The quality, well, it's Ninja. And we've had very, very good success with Ninja products. First time we ever received one that was damaged, they took care of it immediately. And we're just a normal customer. We're not affiliated to Ninja. We're not affiliated to any company. We're just like everybody else. We bought it, we had a problem with it. I called the customer service. They rectified it and fixed it. So I was pretty happy with that. So the quality, we gave it a 9.1 which gives an average overall score of 8.2, which is still scores well. But for us, the downside was the cleaning and the storage of all of this. Jamie's gonna double check the wattage. We believe it's 1200 watts. And I know a lot of people kind of take those things into consideration. Now, if I look at comparing to a Blendtec or a Vitamix, which we reviewed in the past that were, to us, they were just okay, that are in the $600 range, this, package is looking pretty good for the price point. That's our video, we really hope you like it. We're pushing hard to try to go to 100,000 subscribers this year. The only way you can make it happen is by subscribing and helping us out. And if you wanna see more content from us, leave us a comment on what you want us to shoot next and we'll add it to our list. We'll see you on the next one.